Is round three an elimination final for last year's grand finalists? We've got a derby, we've got a showdown, an old 80s rivalry rears its head again on a Sunday, we've got Maddie's match, and everything in between. Welcome to the round three tips. I am Daz, of course, this is Daz Talks Footy. If you enjoy the content, click that like button, I would really appreciate that. If you haven't subscribed yet already, please do so, and we have got a jam-packed round three. We've also got our three picks for on the line, which we're currently four for six on, so I hope you guys are enjoying that as well. I'll update you on the Brownlow leaderboard, but they will then become their own independent videos, and they will be actually the first things that I'll put out. So they'll either be Sunday night or pretty early Monday morning, but I haven't really had time to do it this week, so I will update you here as well. But let's just get straight into it, of course, with Thursday night. So I really do think that if the Bulldogs get beaten in a comprehensive kind of way, then then you could almost put a line through them season over. Now, they have had a really difficult start to the year fixture-wise with getting Melbourne, a rampage in Carlton, and now Sydney. I do forgive that. But if they go 0-3 here, they're going to have to pick themselves up off the canvas. And I'm not saying they can't make finals, they can't win a final or anything, but I find it really hard to believe that they can win a flag given the fact that for six quarters, the first six quarters of the year, they were really, really poor. And yeah, they figured it out in the second half, missed some easy set shots in the last quarter and couldn't quite get over the blues. But this is, if this is another five goal drubbing, I think the Doggies are in massive, massive trouble. I think the Swans get the job done, but in a close one, this is going to be a beauty. How do you tip against Melbourne at this point in general, let alone against the depleted Bombers? No merit. It looks like no Harrison Jones and McDonald tip and Woody either. The Dons are really lacking some firepower. Does Dylan Shield automatically step up? Do they give Andy McGrath more playing time? Does Stringer need to carry them? Put all those things together. It's just impossible to see how the Dons get up. I think Melbourne get it done pretty convincingly, and we can almost put a line through the Bombers because of that. We finally got a Friday night showdown, and it's between 17th and 18th, so thanks, South Australia. You really did everyone proud there. I can't remember the last time an 18th place team would have been favourites, but they're heavy favourites, Port, and so they should be. I know they've got some players out, and it's not 100% confirmed how many of those they're getting back. They're definitely not getting a Lear Lear back this week, but Port are going to get the job done. I know that. You know that. If Port lose this... Ken Hinckley just might get the chop, kind of like Brett Ratton did when Carlton lost to the Gold Coast in 2012. It's got that feel about it. But if Port think he's not the man for the job and they don't get the job done, is it going to be a blessing in disguise if they do get maybe a Clarko and not start again? Who knows? But Ken holds his job for another week. The power get the job done. Could genuinely go either way for this one, and I kind of want to pick a draw. I just... It, it's too hard. It, I think it's within two kicks, this game. Gold Coast's early season form has been awesome. The Giants put up a really spirited fight uh, in their round one game with the Swans and then capitulated against the Tigers. Now with no Phil Davis, what happens there? The Suns don't have Ben King, so the Phil Davis loss might not be seen as greatly in this game. When the margin, I believe, is within a couple of kicks, you always look at the team that needs to win the most. And for me, that's the Giants, but just wouldn't be surprised if either team won by a point or by eight goals, but the Giants just for me. This is a real danger game for the Cats, who couldn't deal with Sydney's pace last week and are now going to get a young, quick team in the pies. Their senior players, I think, will stand up a bit better. Collingwood don't really have a Keller Mills that can shut down danger as effectively as he did last week, which is a fantastic job by Mills. Tom Hawkins, he had an off night. You expect he's going to bounce back. And I think the Cats back six are going to use this game against a forward line that doesn't offer that much pain in terms of body, size, or pace. I think they're going to settle and get into some good form. I think the Cats get it done pretty comfortably. But if they're off to a slow start, look out. But it's the Cats. Brisbane win. That's it. Brisbane win. Haven't tipped the Hawks all year, and they're 2-0. But I think this is where... You can call it the sugar hit if you like, but 
You can't have the perfect game plan three weeks in a row. Given the fact that Hawks lost all the important statistical categories against Port Adelaide and still got the job done was a testament not only to the Hawks, but there does need to be some responsibility on the power there that they couldn't get the job done. The Blues midfield, I don't think are going to get the cheap possessions that Port Adelaide's midfield got last week. Kerno and McKay, if Hardigan doesn't come in for the Hawks, I think one of them is going to go large, whether we put McAvoy down back uh, or DGB ends up playing, or maybe DeConning. I think the Carlton Tolls are going to be too much. If it does rain, it's going to be a bit more interesting, but when it rains, it becomes a contested style of game, and Carlton are one of the best in the league, and the Hawks, they lost a contested ball last week, and their previous game was against North, so how much can you really take away from that? The Blues deserve to start favourites in this one, and I think they get the job done, but I really hope they don't. I really love the way the AFL can bring these sorts of games and this sort of awareness to things that need to be spoken about more in society to the fold, and Maddie's match has got that. The Saints have got a kind of decent record at these games at Marvel, but the Tigers system beats the personnel. The Saints had a good win last week, but I think they come back to earth. I think the Tigers get it done somewhat convincingly. If Freo lose this, put a line in them through finals. If you can't beat St. Kilda after what the Saints served up in round one, and you can't beat a West Coast team who aren't going to get all 14 players back, but they are still going to get a few troops onto the park. But if Freo can't get the job done in this game, they're in big, 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 big trouble. Given the fact that West Coast have gone through the turbulence of last week, and it's still going to be turbulence this week, because having all those changes brought back in, there is going to be a little bit of a chemistry problem early. So the Dockers do need to put them away early. I am going to go the Dockers. I don't feel great about it. I think Frio need to get the job done more, so I'll back them in. That was out of bounds! And now for On The Line, if you haven't joined this segment yet, we are four for six. These are the three best line bets per round that I think all the fans should jump on as quickly as they can. So a tidy profit there because the line is usually about $1.90. We're looking at 7.6 units back for 6 units bet. Build that bankroll throughout the year. That's what we love to see. And this week, I love all three of the bets. Now, both Friday night games are what we're going to go to first. The reason there is an overlap is the AFLW Grand Final was originally scheduled for the Saturday. And... It's not going ahead because of the COVID outbreak for Collingwood, which was unfortunate, but that is why we have the overlap. Why there isn't a Melbourne and then a Perth game, I've got no idea. But we're going to look at both those Friday night games. Let's start with the Demons there, minus 27.5, four and a half goals. That is too big of a break to give the reigning Premier against a team missing their best and fairest winner for last year and not really having a forward line. I don't think Peter Wright is going to play a first quarter like he played last week. And as much as I don't like really betting the big lines, you've got to be looking for the value in the smaller margins. This is the reigning Premier who might not even get out of first gear and should get the job done. And the Bombers, they're an inaccurate team as well. So even if they do get some momentum, they probably won't take advantage of their shots either. 27.5 is ridiculous value. And then let's go to Port Adelaide. How is this only 20.5? This is genuinely astounding to me that they are only getting a 3.5 goal break on the Crows, who genuinely might be one of the bottom two teams in the competition. And sure, Port Adelaide haven't started like a house on fire, but they need to make a statement. The margin should be, if Port Adelaide is serious about 2022 injuries or not, should be double that. So let's jump on that as quickly as we can. And then let's go to the Cats. Now, I'm not a big fan of putting three favourites, and this is the first time this year I have done that. But I think there's been a bit of disrespect here. Whilst I did say during the tips that if the Pies get off to a hot start, the Cats are going to get momentum back and they need to put the foot down. They kicked in accurately, even though they had more inside 50s last week, and they correct it this week against the Pies. And for the Brownlow predictor, now I'm not going to go through every individual game. I'm going to start doing that throughout the week. But Andy Brayshaw, Paddy Cripps, and Mitch Lewis, if you can believe that, are all on six. But that is everyone in the competition, according to my algorithm, that is over three votes, and I'll be going through all that stuff in more detail throughout the week. But comment below. Let me know what you think. What tips do you agree with? What do you disagree with? Let me know. I love responding to all of your comments. I hope you have a fantastic week. I might make a video after the Thursday or the Friday night games, depending if I think there's one to be there. But if not, enjoy your weekend, guys. Can't wait to see you after a fantastic round three. Be well, my friends. Goodbye.